Hi there, welcome, I'm Crystal. I was diagnosed with idiopathic gastroparesis 17 years ago. Since then, I've become a dual certified coach. I've written two books about gastroparesis, and I've spent the last 10 years helping people worldwide learn to live well with the condition. Today, we're gonna to talk to my motility specialist to answer your questions about COVID-19 and gastroparesis. Stay tuned. Okay, so recently I've been getting more emails, comments on my social media, asking questions about gastroparesis and COVID-19. Does COVID cause gastroparesis? Does it worsen pre-existing gastroparesis? Is it safe for people with gastroparesis to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't know the answers to all of these questions, although I did get two doses of Pfizer, did great, and think everybody who's able should get their vaccine. But I'm not a medical professional, so I called up someone who is. I talked to my motility specialist, Dr. Brian Lacey, at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. Dr. Lacey is an extremely knowledgeable, extremely kind and compassionate and generous doctor. He specializes in motility disorders. He is the co-editor of the American Journal for Gastroenterology. He knows his stuff and he kindly agreed to answer the questions that I have been receiving about COVID-19 and gastroparesis. So without further ado, here's my chat with Dr. Lacey. Hi, Dr. Lacey. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me here. This will be a great discussion. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So we're going to chat today just a little bit about COVID and gastroparesis. And this has been something that's been coming up in my email and on social media. So I think this is going to be really helpful. And the first thing I actually want to talk about is whether or not COVID can cause gastroparesis. I've gotten several emails lately from people who are newly diagnosed and they think it's because they had a COVID infection. So is that something you're seeing? Is that a known complication of COVID? So that's a great question. Let's think a little bit about common causes of gastroparesis to set the stage. Your listeners are very smart, they're well-educated, but let's set the stage to help answer that question. And when we think about common causes of gastroparesis, we recognize that diabetes accounts for about 25% of cases. And then there are a variety of other causes, including surgery to the stomach from either anti-reflux surgery, or bariatric weight loss surgery, sometimes connective tissue disorders such as scleroderma or vascular disorders to the GI tract. But the biggest group, as you know, are those patients that we label as having idiopathic gastroparesis, where we can't always identify the cause, but the biggest cause there really is probably a prior infection. And as many of your listeners know, we recognize that a prior viral or bacterial infection can sometimes precipitate the onset of gastroparesis symptoms, especially in those who are genetically involved. So the question's a great one because COVID is a virus and could this viral infection cause gastroparesis? The answer is it's possible, but we really have not seen any significant uptick. We do know that there are actually more COVID receptors in the GI tract than in the lungs. So it's actually commonly going through the GI tract because you swallow the virus. But what we're seeing is more of a problem with diarrhea or bloating, rarely constipation, kind of lower GI symptoms. Um, in preparation for this phone call today, I reached out to a colleague in Italy who's been tracking thousands of patients in Italy with a documented COVID infection. They are seeing more cases of IBS afterwards, irritable bowel syndrome, but he's not identified any cases of gastroparesis. So I think it's a great question. It's possible that over time we will see some cases but the stomach is actually pretty resilient. So to date, we do not see those patients with new onset gastroparesis from COVID, which I think is very encouraging. That is, that's super encouraging. What about people who have pre-existing gastroparesis and then they get COVID? Is there any evidence that a COVID infection might worsen their symptoms long-term or exacerbate 
there are delaying gastric emptying. Obviously, like you said, there are GI implications of, of having the COVID infection, but should people be worried if they have gastroparesis and they get COVID that it's going to worsen their condition in the long term? Okay, another great question. Your audience and your listeners are way too smart. <laughs> so the way I like to think about many, but not all gastroparesis patients, is that sometimes it's not just one insult, and I call them insults, not just one precipitating event that causes the development of gastroparesis, but rather a series of insults. And so for some patients, there may be a genetic predisposition, and then maybe there's a viral infection, and then a year or two later, there's another infection, and then a year or two later, they have surgery, and finally, it's just too many insults to the nervous system, the GI tract, so they develop gastroparesis symptoms. And so you could imagine that if you have gastroparesis, and whether your symptoms are nausea or pain or vomiting, um, that another insult could worsen things. So I think the answer is, is it possible? Yes. Have we seen that? The answer, once again, fortunately is no. And I think that for whatever reason, the stomach seems to be a little bit more resilient to this than the lower GI tract, because we are seeing, again, patients with new onset or worsening of their IBS irritable bowel syndrome symptoms. But we haven't really seen a worsening or new onset of gastroparesis symptoms. Now, again, as this pandemic plays out, and hopefully as the year winds down, we're gonna see this kind of slowly go away. Is it possible in the years to come, we will see a little bit of an uptick? Sure, is it possible? Absolutely, I'll buy that. But we just haven't seen that yet, which again is very reassuring. Yeah, I have a little bit of a hypothetical question kind of jumping off of that. So you haven't seen it yet, but if somebody, you know, feels that their gastroparesis has gotten worse following a COVID infection, because that factor is a viral factor, would you expect that over time it would get better again, similar to how a lot of viral cases of gastroparesis do improve over time? Yes, I like the question and I like the way you phrase that. So for your listeners, when I see somebody with new onset gastroparesis or those with more persistent symptoms, secondary to a prior infection, such as a virus or a bacteria, generally that's the category of patients most likely to improve over time because we know that the nervous system to the stomach can heal. So in answer to your question, yes, let's take a patient who has gastroparesis or gastroparesis symptoms, and they notice some worsening after COVID or any other type of viral infection. And, and don't be surprised that you'll have some temporary worsening of symptoms because viruses can affect the way the GI tract functions. That generally I will hope for and also expect that those symptoms will slowly resolve and patients will go back to their baseline. Great, that's really encouraging. I wanna switch gears just a little bit here and talk about the COVID vaccines. I've seen some hesitancy um, from people who are considering the vaccine who have gastroparesis, who are worried about or maybe have heard from others that the vaccine put them into a gastroparesis flare. I personally had two doses of Pfizer and didn't have any issues at all, but do you have any, do you have anything to say about people who might be hesitant to get the vaccine because they're worried about what impact it could have on gastroparesis? Yes, another good question. So, you know, I think many people are worried about this vaccine or these vaccines, because we now have several really good options, um, in part because it's a new virus. We're still learning about the virus and we're learning about these vaccines. Some patients and some providers, healthcare providers, were even worried that these vaccines seem to be developed so quickly that makes them a little bit nervous. But I would argue that technology these days is amazing. And these vaccines, I think, are incredibly safe in the big picture. 
Uh, so I would not be worried about safety, and I would suggest that all patients get vaccinated. Now, thinking about gastroparesis patients, are they at higher risk? Well, you know, we are now recommending that pregnant women get vaccinated. That's a high-risk group. We recommend they get vaccinated. We recommend that patients with inflammatory bowel disease, where they have an autoimmune disorder and they're immunocompromised, they should get vaccinated. So I think it's very safe that patients with this disorder of the enteric nervous system, this nervous disorder of the GI tract, gastroparesis, they should get vaccinated. Let's quickly look at the J&J &J data. You know, it's temporarily been removed from the market. Six cases of blood clot, that's out of 7 million doses. So all I would say is I think the Pfizer vaccine is very safe. I think Moderna is very safe. If I were a woman on a birth control pill, on an oral contraceptive, those patients, women and women on oral contraceptives are a little bit of a higher risk for blood clots. I might choose, if I were that patient, not to get the J&J &J vaccine, but I would ask for the Pfizer or Moderna because we've not seen the blood clot issues. But again, it's six women out of 7 million doses. That's incredibly safe. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think this is going to be super helpful and answer a lot of questions that, that people have been having around, around COVID and gastroparesis. So I really appreciate your time and you chatting with us. You are very welcome. And thank you for everybody who joined in today. Hope this answers some questions. All right, there you have it. Hopefully that helps to put your mind at ease if you have some concerns about gastroparesis and COVID. Hopefully if you were feeling hesitant about the vaccine, that information was helpful and maybe put you at ease a little bit to know that it is safe and it is recommended to get the COVID-19 vaccine. As always, if this was helpful, please like and share the video. You can find much more information about all things gastroparesis at livingwithgastroparesis.com. And I will see you next time.